All right, next up, let's run a single bioinformatics tool, a Whittle workflow with Mini Whittle. Again, let's get an example file from our course. So uh, inside of GitHub, if you go to this URL and you just copy this file, um, you can see there's two sections. Lines 3 through 20 define the workflow. Lines 22 through 36, 37 actually define the task. So this is a VCF file chromosome counter and it uses a Tabix tool. So you can see in line 22, the task is Tabix count. It takes as an input a VCF file that is zipped, GZ, a TBI file, and then uh, a region that's to be uh, verified. Lines 28 and 30 uh, execute the Tabix command on the input variable VCFGZ on the region. And on lines 31 through 33, they set the output to um, a count um, uh, reading an integer into standard out. So in other words, what's the chromosome coverage of this particular file? This will run, this task will run on the Docker tool on line 35, bio containers, the Tabix tool with a particular version. The execution of the workflow starts on line four. Um, the variables from the task are mapped to the workflow. Now this wouldn't be necessary in a single task workflow, but in pipelining, of course, you're often going to have, you know, five or 10 or 50 tasks and you will be working with the file across the tasks. So it's a, it's a scope to the workflow in that point. So we're just following that pattern. You can see we've got the same variables here. Notice on line seven, the number of chromosomes that we're uh, looking for is 22 and we can adjust that and we will. Um, interestingly, uh, before the call of the task on line 11, we have uh, the WDL keyword scatter. And it's important to understand uh, what this does. So this is a uh, scatter gather pattern. So uh, you are gonna have multiple execution threads of this. So for you know I in range, the number of chromosomes, uh, you're going to scatter. So we'll see this when it's executed. Then we call the Tabix count and then we set the variables equal on line 13 and line 14. On line 17, our output is an array. And notice a pair of string and int, and that's our counts. And uh, then we call the zip method on the chromosome and the tabix count dot count. So again, if you're new to WDL, take the time to explore some of the other WDL resources. The real focus of this course is to see how the execution looks using the mini Whittle tool. So we've copied this over into our run environment, and here it is. And the first mini Whittle uh, tool that I've used on it, uh, you can now see, even with a single task, um, how useful this can be. I ran mini Whittle check on this file with no shell check, and you can see that we have this really handy outline. So it has the name of the file, it has the workflow name, the fact that we have a scatter, and our call of the method, and then what the method or the task is. Um, I tend to say method because of my background in classical programming, but it's task in this particular environment. Now, just as we did before, if we were to break this um, and we were to put an S in here and save it, and then if we were to rerun this, we get an error. So, um, you know, I know this is a real simple example, but when you've got really long Widow files, which is often the case, um, it can be really, really useful. And now we're going to use another capability of Mini Whittle, um, which is the run capability. Now in this case, we do have input variables. So we haven't defined them. Uh, so if we try to run this, it's not going to execute the workflow because we haven't said where our BCF file is, for example, but it will do something else. So I'll show you what that is. So it's, again, super useful. If you're um, working with a Whittle file and you're trying to figure out, um, can I repurpose this with my data? Um, you can just simply say run, and then you get this very useful um, summary of what are the required inputs. In our case, it's a VCF file and a TBI file. 
the optional inputs and the outputs. And then in red, it tells us what's missing. Now there's two different ways that we can map those required inputs. We can simply assign them on the command line. So many would run, which is what we're going to do. Or we can specify them in a file, an input file, and we can actually pass that as a parameter. We'll see that in a subsequent movie. This first one, we're just gonna assign the values on the command line. Now, in terms of the input files, they either can be local, so in other words, you could upload them to this machine and put the path, or they need to be reachable. Now, in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to um, grab them off of a location off the internet. So I have this run command, uh, set up in the course here. So if you take a look at this, you can see that we're going to say mini Whittle run, and then we're going to assign the VCF uh, to this location from NCBI and the TBI from there as well. Notice that we're using the verbose uh, flag here, and this is going to impact the amount of output that we get. So I'm going to clear the screen and then we're going to run this command. Notice in the bottom of the screen you have an elapsed, tasks finished, ready, and running. Now you can see in our output we have a count of the coverage of our VCF for all of the chromosomes. So, because we specified all 22, so you can see it there. And if we look into our files here that are output, this time we don't have one call. We have how many? We have 20, 21. Why? We used a scatter. So for each chromosome, we had um, one set of implementation. Now again, we're working on a single machine here with I think four CPUs, but envision how this could scale with a huge number of files onto a dynamically sizable cluster of virtual machines, and this is really the pattern. But again, the scatter keyword is what caused these additional um, implementations. And again, this is the same pattern that we've seen where we have the standard out rephrase, where we have the standard out, which gives us the count here. Again, notice the amount of detail. We have a task log. So if we had a particular run of a task that was overrunning our compute resources or something, we could look at that. Um, and we have the inputs. So this is for chromosome one. And we have the output here as well. Now, if we wanted to understand how this works by adjusting the amount of chromosomes, we could just say, let's say three, for example. And now if we rerun this, and let's actually not say verbose this time. That just outputs all logs. And notice here we have only the three chromosomes covered. So again, we're moving closer towards a uh, production uh, level um, workflow using Mini Whittle here. Of course, this is only a single tool workflow. In the real world, that's kind of an uncommon scenario. You generally have multiple tools or tasks. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at a real world workflow from uh, one of the heavy users of Whittle, which is the Broad Institute. And uh, that, that will be a little bit longer because of the, the amount of tasks in the workflow. But the uh, Mini Whittle check and the Mini Whittle run and the Mini Whittle run with parameters are a, a super useful pattern when you are exploring Whittle files for use for your research.